is, guys. It's your boy Blast from SHD, and today we are here for BHD Story Time. You guys have been asking me for the longest time for more dating story time. This is the legend of how I got revenge on this piece of shit ass female that I was dating. Oh my god. God, bro, never, ever, ever date a virgin, bro. Never date a virgin. Listen to me, BHD Army. I want all of you dudes out there who are loving subscribers of your boy Blasphemous HD to do me a favor and never date a virgin, bro. At least never seriously date one. You can talk to a virgin, but never, ever commit to one of these bitches. And a lot of my people might be like, oh, that's messed up. And the reason why I say this is from my own personal experience with females who claim that they're virgins, they're usually full of shit. Oh my God, bro. I don't know what is up with some of us dudes and thinking that we're gonna find a female who is pure and holier of thou whose vagina is better and cleaner than the rest of them oh my god okay so this story starts when i was back in college at unlv i met this girl named Farron. she was 19 i was like 23 this chick was bad as shit. And I could not tell you why her body looked like that. I wouldn't put a picture up even if I did have some of them because, you know, I think it's kind of weird because, like, niggas always want to go looking for the females I be telling them about so that they can shoot their shots. You gotta find your own vagina over here, you motherfuckers. You son of a slut. So, ha, ha, ha. So, uh, with that being said, Farron was one of the baddest females. No, no, she was not. She was not one of the baddest. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say Farron was an eight. Okay, so back in the day when I was like 23, 24, for some reason, I used to think through whatever stupid romantic movies I used to watch as a child that finding a female who was a supposed virgin was a come up. Oh my God. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys may or may not hear the way I talk about females nowadays, which is pretty much don't trust any female. Don't fall in love with any females. If they tell you they want you to do something, don't do it. There's no point in trying to please a woman other than sexually. There's no point in believing females when they tell you stuff. There's no point in listening to anything women say. For the most part, 95% of what females say, do, and tell you they want from you as a man is usually bullshit. Now, that's how I believe nowadays, okay? But this all came through great trial and error because best believe my mother set me up for failure when it came to dating because my mom was a single mother. So growing up listening to my mom, I was always told that you're supposed to believe these bitches. You're supposed to trust in bitches. You're supposed to buy them stuff and give them stuff and prove to them that you're good enough for them. No matter what you get or accomplish in life, you're supposed to be somewhere on your hands and knees apologizing and proving to a female that you're worthy of sniffing her neck hair or wherever hair grows on the bitch. I don't know. Uh, which obviously differs greatly from the way that I view females today. Now, granted, I do love women, given that I can't not 
not love women, considering there's literally nothing else to mate with aside from human women. <laughs> I swear to God. Uh, <laughs> now, with that being said, since then, the only thing that changed over the years is the amount of women that I've been with, dated, kicked it with, and talked to. And with all of those growing numbers of women I've been kicking it with and learning from and boning and whatnot, I've learned the truth about females and female nature and how they really are and what they really do. Oh my God. Now with that being said, this chick Farron, she really helped me learn a lot about female nature, man. Oh my God, dude. Now, when I first met this chick, I believed she was holier than thou. Why did I believe she was holier than thou? Because she told me so. This bitch was always up in church. She was always preaching this Bible thumping bullshit about how a man should be traditional and be faithful and be loving and provide security and take care of women and all of this bullshit. And I ain't even gonna lie to y'all, bro. I was 23, I believed the bullshit, bro. I believed the okie doke, bro. Oh my God. Now, when I first met Farron, the first thing I noticed about her was her breasts. I'ma keep it real with y'all, it was her boobs. Them shits was as delicious as they look. I remember what they taste like. <laughs> Ah, the thing I liked the most about Farron was her upbeat personality. She was funny, she was a comedian type of chick, but she was bad. This chick, bro, she was a freak of nature, which of course later on I learned was more true than anything. Now, I started kicking it with this chick, man, and when we first started hanging out, on our first date, this chick is telling me about how she has a vow of celibacy, She's believing in the Lord and she's saving herself for marriage. All of this bullshit that I really believed. Oh my God. So she tells me all of this Bible thumping bullshit and I'm listening to her and I'm believing her. And then next thing you know, she's topping me off in her car. She had a really nice Honda Accord. And mind you, bro, one thing I will say about this chick Farron, man, she was like at least number three throat goats of all time, nigga. This girl was the goose with the golden throat, bro. Oh my God, bro. Oh my God, bro. Now, I'ma keep it real with y'all, bro. I used to be in love with this chick, bro. When I tell you I was head over heels, in love with this chick, bro. She was the one. I thought this girl was gonna be the one. I thought this girl was gonna have my kids. I thought that this was gonna be the girl that I was gonna end up wiping up because we seemed to be so compatible in most of all the ways. I'm not gonna lie, man. This chick used to make me bust so hard, bro. I swore to God I was gonna wipe her up one of these days. Now, aside from all the positives I have to say about Farron, Baby Girl was the biggest tease I have ever been with in my entire life. Oh my God, dude. This chick had to be careful. Me and this girl, we used to give each other head like all the time. Now, like I said, this girl was heavy into church, heavy in the Bible thumping, swore to God that she was holier than thou, more so than everyone else around her. But even though I usually don't date religious females, the thing that kept me around, aside from all of her overbearing religious views and, and bullshit on virginity and oh my God and holier than thou, was the fact that she was indeed the goose with the golden throat. Oh, I'm not gonna go into detail, man, but goodness Lord, man. A lot of y'all other females, man, y'all need to step y'all game up, bro. This, goodness Lord, bro, I haven't run into hardly any other of those of Farron's, man. Goodness Lord. So this chick used to top me off so well that I just figured, okay, I just gotta wait 
for the butt cheeks. Oh my God, bro. The games this chick used to play on me, bro. It's the thing of legends. Horrible, horrible legends. Okay, so I'm just gonna tell y'all one of the situations. So about three months into us dating, we at a makeout spot at the top of the garage at UNLV, which is the college that we both went to. We up there and there's cars parked around us and the cars are rocking back and forth. So you know what they getting into. I'm trying to do the same thing. This female will literally let me get to the brink of sex going down, but would always tell me at like the last minute, no, I have a vow to the Lord. I'm waiting for marriage and all this other bullshit. And because I didn't want to be pushy, the night would normally start off with, you know, her giving me a whole bunch of head and the head was fire, bro. Baby girl's head game was fire, yo. So I wasn't really tripping. But after she would give me a whole bunch of freaking head, this chick would get buck ass naked. Oh my God, nigga, I'm remembering this shit right now, nigga. Oh no. <laughs> so we up in the car, this chick gets butt naked and starts giving me dome. This chick would tease me so bad that she would give me 95% of the way there. And then she would pull me out of her throat. And then because she was already buck ass naked, because she would always get ass naked, she was a very, very, very sexual person, bro. Which is one of the reasons why I liked her so much. And then she would take my shit and then rub it right on her vagina, never putting it in. You know what I mean? I'm sitting there, man, and I'm just waiting. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm low key thrusting up, trying to get it popping and shit. And she would look at me and just, just watch me go through all of the horribleness of how horny she was making me, but not finishing me off or satisfying me and shit. And the worst thing about this shit was, she would have the nerve to use the Lord to justify why she was teasing me so bad. Oh my God, I want you so bad. I want you so bad, oh my God. That's why I'm rubbing it on my vagina so much because I want you so bad, but we can't. We just can't because I made a vow to the Lord and I don't want to disappoint my dad and the Lord. And I would keep trying to like coax her into it. I would keep trying to like coach her through it and get her to do it anyway. But if I ever did that too much, she would start crying real tears. Like, oh my God, I told you the Lord and it's the Bible and the Lord that you just, we can't know God. <laughs> Which would of course make me feel of shamed of my sexual urges, even though she would never say any of this stuff when it came to me giving her head. So after her doing this for literally months, six, eight months straight, and I'm still waiting on the butt cheeks, because I'm figuring this is my girlfriend and we do damn near everything else except for penetration. All I gotta do is just wait until she's comfortable. Because you know, back then, I was a simp. I was a simp. I used to believe in women's feelings. I used to trust what they said and believe that they were all good people, all this other bullshit. And mind you, this whole time I'm with her, I'm being faithful as shit. I'm being so faithful that bad bitches are throwing vagina at me and I'm saying no because I'm with fairy. And this chick is literally one of the reasons why I really don't do relationships unless it makes a lot of sense. Like the chick is just really freaking awesome. So yeah, I'm with this chick, bro. I'm being faithful the entire time. I'm not having any sex. I'm not talking to any girls. I'm not doing anything because I didn't want to do her wrong. I'm trying to be faithful to her. Oh my God. Now, eight months into my sexless relationship, I'm on Facebook, I'm chilling, I'm doing my thing. At this point, I'd already understood that this has got to be some sort of bullshit. Like, I don't understand how this chick can hold on to her hormones this good. How is she this okay 
with not getting ran up in. Like, how is she this okay with not getting her kitty cat pounded out? Now, the thing that made this that much worse is that I'm giving this chick head, and when I'm giving this chick head, bro, this chick is nutting and squirting and shooting and all of the good things that vagina's doing when I'm breathing into it. So I'm thinking it's only a matter of time before she lets me beat the kitty cat up because I'm already tearing the shit up with my other parts of me. There's no way this chick would be crazy enough not to let me hit that shit because I'm thinking she's gotta wanna have sex sooner or later, right? She's got hormones. Come to find out she was on her knees. Ooh, she was sexing everyone but me. That's why we could never be. Like, nigga, that's what was popping. That's what this bitch was doing, bro. Now, at UNLV, they have a computer room. You can go in there, use the computers, do whatever you got to do. One day I'm on that mug. I'm on Facebook, just like everyone else. And I'm looking up my feed and all of this stuff. And of course, me and Farron, we were in a relationship. Now, of course, me and Farron, our relationship status was in a relationship on Facebook, right? I'm thinking because me and her is in a relationship, ain't nobody gonna try to come in between us because everybody knows we in a relationship. And I'm expecting the number one person not to mess with the relationship, being fearing. Oh my God, bro. And I never really wanted to tell you guys these stories because I kind of don't want you guys learning about female nature from me because it's pretty fucked. Like it's really, really bad, man. Now I'm not gonna say that this is 100% what female nature is, but it's just kind of what I've experienced is if you get a girl and you lock her down and you're all faithful and lovey-dovey and you listen to her and you take direction from her and you give a shit about her feelings and when she tells you, oh my God, I'm waiting for marriage, you believe her instead of just in, instead of just breaking up with the bitch for not smashing the way you're supposed to. So like I said, I'm on Facebook, bro. I go on Farron's page to leave her a message on her wall to let her know I'm thinking about her or some other stupid bullshit that I was simping about back then. And I see a message right up under the message that I sent from a different dude that says, yo, I had a great time the other night, you know what I mean? I had a lot of fun. Yo, mad cool, yo, good looking, blah, blah, blah. Basically talking about how they had hung out and how much of a good time he had with her. And I'm looking at this and my heart drops into my fucking anus yo i'm just like wait what she's hanging out with other dudes i'm over here being faithful and turning down every other woman that's trying to kick it with me and she's hanging out with other niggas not only that but the way the dude worded the message it seemed like they fucked so i'm just sitting there like wait a minute now mind you i was still simping at the time i was still a simp I still didn't really know much about female nature. I believed women's word when they told me that, oh, if we get in a relationship, I'm faithful. I don't do anything. The pussy's yours, all this other bullshit. Oh boy, did I learn the opposite of that shit is apparently true. So I knew she was at the library at the time. I run over to the library, bro. I go find her, bro, and I'm fucking livid. And I was like, yo. Who is this nigga Jesse on your page sending you messages on your wall about, yo, I had a good time last night. Yo, what's up? And she's like, oh, what? No, he's just my friend. I knew him from high school. I'm like, yo, why does it look like y'all had sex? Like, what's up with this? Was it? She's like, no, no, it's not what it looks like. We're just friends and you're being jealous right now. Don't be jealous. It's really not attractive on you. And you're really making me second guess wanting to be with you. This is the shit that females say pretty much when, you know, you catch them in some bullshit and they're trying to save it. So, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I was pussy whipped without even getting any of the pussy at the time. I was like, you know what? You're right. It makes no sense that you would do this to me. I started believing her and shit because I wanted to believe her. I wanted to believe her. I wholeheartedly believe every dude out there who's ever been cheated on or screwed over or did dirty by females, we wanna believe the bitches. We wanna believe them. And only life 
life experience and dating experience is what teaches us the cold, hard fucking truth. With that being said, I go back to the computer lab and I'm doing my thing. And then I hear from one of her female friends, oh yeah, yo, Farron, bro, she's hanging out with this other guy, DeAndre, that she met down at the skating rink. And you know, he break dances and stuff and she hangs out with him. And yeah, I heard they've been doing stuff and she told me that they've been messing around. So I'm like, what the fuck? So very slowly, I start to hear from different people that she's hanging out with different dudes. And then I'm starting to see her. I'm seeing on her wall on Facebook, dudes are messaging her. And I start to notice that they aren't looking like regular messages. It's looking like some nasty shit. I'm like, mother what? And mind you, this wouldn't even have been that bad if me and Farron were actually having sex. If she wasn't making me wait while she was out cheating with these other dudes on me. So I'm not gonna lie, YouTube. I got to a place where I wanted some goddamn revenge. Some much needed revenge. I didn't notice at the time that females will literally date five, six different dudes and each guy has a different category. One guy's the money guy, one guy's the car guy, the other guy's the dick guy, the other guy's the mouth guy, the other guy is the popular guy. You know what I mean? I had no idea that this was a thing. So with that being said, I apparently was the mouth guy, right? I was trying to be the penis guy, but shit, apparently that spot was already taken. So I'm like, you know what? I got this bitch. I got her. You know what I mean? Because whenever I gave this chick head, she would always nut and squirt and shoot, make all the happy, you know what I mean? And I'm not going to sit here and say that I was giving this chick head just for her. Number one, she was giving me the best head I'd ever, I'd still ever had in my damn life, hands down. And on top of that, she was super duper entertaining. You know what I mean? Now, with all of this being said, I was like, you know what? I look at vagina as practice. So me giving her head was helping me build skills that, that I hold near and dear to me, because in my brain, that's how you hook the shit out these bitches. And on top of that, I was building the skills that a real nigga needs to have if he was gonna keep being a sugar baby. Because you know, at the time, I was heavy into having females pay my bills and giving me shit and whatnot, which is what made it that much worse that I was with this chick because it was hard for me to find sugar mamas when I was being faithful to this damn chick. So I was still getting something out of it. I wasn't just being one million percent screwed over but getting teased that bad bro get me 90 percent of the way and then rub my johnson on the outside of her happy place and then be like oh my god we can't because the lord oh my god the lord oh my god so i devised a plan to get back at uh at good old farron now i waited about a good two to three weeks to kick it with her because i wanted her to be horny as shit. Cause this chick was the type of chick that if she didn't bust a nut every other day, she was distraught. This chick would lose her mind if she didn't come for longer than a day and a half or two days. So with that being said, I waited three weeks. I made sure to be busy for three weeks. Didn't see her, didn't hang out with her. Always said I was doing something else. I was doing schoolwork, whatever, whatever. Right now, after three weeks passes, I was still trying to avoid her. I'm at UNLV, I'm in the computer lab, and she just runs in there and she catches me. She's like, yo, Maurice, oh my God, where have you been? Where have you been? Oh my God, I like, we gotta talk. I gotta hang out with you, we haven't seen each other in so long. I gotta hang out with you. So, so me and her, we start walking down the upper hallway by the computer lab in UNLV, and while we're walking down the hallway, she's like, yo, I'm so horny, like, she misses you. And what she means by she misses you is, that's what she used to call her vagina. You know what I mean? Oh my God, she loves it when you talk to her. Oh my God, like, she loves you. Oh my God, she loves it. Like, Farron was shitty, but her vagina was, luckily. It was, it was great, it was a great place to be. So she's like, oh my God, like, she misses you so much. Like, let's go talk, let's go hang out. Now me at the time, I didn't have my own place. She didn't have her own place. So we went to the unisex bathroom on the second floor next to the computer lab, which is where everyone did their nastiness at. Everybody who was doing nasty shit did they nasty shit up at UNLV in the unisex bathroom, bro. It's where 
it all went down. Now, we get inside the unisex bathroom. She wanted me to give her head. I wanted to give her head. You know what I'm saying? So, I have her get completely buck naked, right? She have her put all of her clothes on the ground so that she doesn't have to lay on the cold tile of the UNLV bathrooms. For you guys that did go there, y'all know what I'm talking about. But before I give her head, I have her go to the sink and wash the shit out of her vagina, you know what I'm saying? I'll never forget it. I had her put a bunch of the napkins together to form like a makeshift washcloth and shit. I had her run her vagina under the hot water and wash her vagina like a bunch of times and shit. If I'm gonna eat some vagina, yo, it's gotta be clean vagina, yo. I ain't eating no, been walking around for the last two hours. I had to run up some stairs, vagina nigga. Like, it ain't popping like that. Now, remember how I told y'all she used to get me 90% of the way there and then tease the shit out of me really, really bad to the point where if I wasn't the type of guy that I am, that it would have been a real issue. And granted, females, you can't do this shit like this to every type of dude, bro. You could very well just get taken advantage of. So please don't do this shit. Luckily enough for me, I have a shit ton of self-control. I would much rather not get vagina than take vagina. So I give this chick head. <laughs> this is my favorite part of the story. Sweet revenge. Oh my God. Now when I was younger, I was very insecure about knowing what to do during sex. So much so that I used to read books. I used to go online and search up tutorials and instructionals on how to work the vagina good. Yeah, I mean, mind you, if any of you guys remember the story that I told you guys a while back, about how I boned my uh, my teacher, my 30 something year old teacher when I was 15 years old and she taught me some super valuable vagina tricks and tactics and shit, nigga. Now, I took all of that stuff I learned from that teacher, nigga, and built on top of that shit like a motherfucker. Whenever I was messing with this chick Farron, this chick was squirting, shooting, crying, dry heaving and shit. It was hilarious, bro. <laughs> so, <laughs> not only that, I got the mindset when I was younger that the harder I made a chick nut, the more sex she would want to have with me. So I was always trying to figure out new ways to make a chick's vagina cry. <laughs> Happy tears, you feel me? <laughs> Bro, I know this three weeks of me not doing shit with her had to hurt to the point where when she saw me, she's just like, yo, let's go in the bathroom. I'm going to wash up crazy good, get ass naked. I'm going to need you to empty me out. Yeah, I'm saying, because, you know, baby girl was a shooter. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying her vagina was on drill time. Not like Slim Jesus drill time. Oh shit, I just I just made a lot of females' vaginas dry. This wouldn't be the first time, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We gonna edit that out. So mind you, at this point, I start conversating with Farron's happy place, you know what I'm saying? We having a nice, intimate conversation. I'm pulling out all the stops. I'm using all the tricks. I'm doing everything. I'm following the exact roadmap that I always followed to make her vagina shoot happy liquids. You know, and with that being said, I get baby girl 95% of the way there, right? 95% of the way there. Bro, baby girl starts like breathing all bad. <laughs> and her tone of voice start fucking up on her. She starts saying shit that she ain't ready to say and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm seeing all the signs, you know what I'm saying? Baby girl starts shaking to the point where I gotta like hold her down to keep her from running and shit, you know what I'm saying? Baby girl starts trying to hit a couple clinches like Sindel in Mortal Kombat 10 when she uses her thigh muscles to rip a nigga in half like she did Kano in the Mortal Kombat movie. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that, bro. Baby girl's stomach start going up and down, <laughs> yeah, all that shit. So when all that shit happened, 
I know I got baby girl exactly to where I needed her to be at. And so the injury, it's been three weeks since I've done anything with her. So I know baby girl's literally hurting for a squirting. Right to the point where I got her up to where she starts losing control of all her motor skills and shit. She's reaching for shit that's not there. Baby girl starts having hot and cold flashes and shit. I literally had to shove her own underwear and a bunch of napkins down her fucking throat to keep her to shut the fuck up. Cause mind you, we're in the unisex bathroom, bro. We're at UNLV, baby. People can't hear this shit happening. If people find out shit's going down, that's gonna be my ass. So get her up to 95% and I just stop everything. And she looks up at me and she's like, what the, what, what the fuck are you doing? No, 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 no. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, no, no. What are you doing? Keep going. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. What are you doing? Keep going. And I just look up at her. I look at her dead in her face. And I say to her ever so gently with a real sad, shameful look in my eye. I'm like, baby, I feel like I'm helping you cheat on your vows to the Lord. <laughs> Suck it, bitch. <laughs> I swear to God, I saw the devil through the windows of her soul. She shot me the evilest look. She's like, what the f are you talking about? What the f are you talking about? I don't give a shit about that, okay? No, we're already doing this. We're already, I'm so close. What are you doing? No, no, keep going, keep going. Now, you may wonder why it sounds like I'm straining in my voice when I'm characterizing her yelling at me and trying to force me to keep going to push baby girl across that sexual finish line. That's because at this point, she's got both her hands around the back of my head and she's literally trying to shove my face into her vagina so that I can finish her off. And I'm resisting only halfway to make her think that I'm gonna, but not really going. And she's like, no, what are you talking about? And I'm like, baby, I don't want you to not feel like you're pure. I know that you're a virgin and you're waiting for marriage. And I don't, I just don't want to help you cheat on your vows that you made to the Lord. Bro, when I tell you baby girl sounded like she was possessed by the devil himself, I've never heard a angrier, more raspier fucking voice come from a fucking female. She's like, Ugh, what the fuck are you talking about? No, no, keep going. Please, come on. Come on, I'm so close. What are you doing? And even though I'm playing the role on the outside, cause you know, I've always been an actor. On the inside, I couldn't understand why this was so much of an issue for her, given she done this to me so many times. She done this to me five times a week for the last eight months. So I really couldn't understand why baby girl would have an issue with this. I would have figured she liked it given how much she would do this to me. But I say all the time, subscribers, it's always different when the shoe is on the other dick. I mean, the condom is on the other foot. Uh, the, the, shit, I got, you guys know what I mean. So then, after stalling for about 45 seconds, acting like I'm holier than thou, like she's been acting, this bitch starts getting violent. She smashes her head, cracking the freaking floor. Not only that, but she kept doing it. Bah, 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 bah. Baby girl closes her eyes, bro, and just starts smashing her skull violently into the fucking floor because I wouldn't finish her off. God wouldn't let her nut. Which is real funny, you know what I'm saying? Like, isn't this what we've been doing, bitch? <laughs> So then, baby girl comes back up. She's like, please, 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 no, please, please. I was so close, I was so close. So I was like, you know what, you're right, you're right, you're right, I'm sorry, you're right, you're right. So I keep going, right? I keep going for about another, you know, about another 45 seconds until I feel that she gets up to 98% this time. She starts breathing irregularly again, unable to control her breath, her stomach, starts going up and down by itself. Parts of her body starts getting all hot and whatnot. So I know she's super duper close again. And then I stop again. And I'm like, but baby, I, I really just feel like I, I know how much your virginity means to you. 
And I just really feel like we shouldn't be doing this because just like you said before, like we shouldn't be having any types of sex. And this is a form of sex. I just really feel like I'm helping you cheat on the Lord and your vows that you made to him. And bro, baby girl loses it, bro. Baby girl has a full on nuclear meltdown, bro. It's funny because half of the meltdown was her begging me to finish her off and the other half of her was berating me for stopping. But none of that was really working on me because I was using the same impeccable defense that she had been using. The Lord, oh, my vows of, of chastity that I'd made to the holier than thou and above and all that bullshit that she had been feeding me while still cheating on me with all these other dudes. And yes, before any of you guys wonder, it was confirmed. She was boning the breakdancer skater, the breakdancer skater's brother, she was boning the dude off of Facebook. I'd only confirmed four other guys she was cheating on me with. But, you know, there's no telling. It was probably like seven or ten. And what's really funny about all of this is none of this would have mattered if she wasn't teasing me so bad. So, after having a complete fucking bitch fit, because I'm still sitting there using my holier-than-thou defense the same way that she'd been using. Thanks, Farron. I learned from the best, bitch. <laughs> She gets up and angrily stands there looking at me. And she's like, yo, why would you do this to me? Why would you do this to me? Bro, and she starts yelling at me for getting her so close and not letting her nut. Apparently, it was a real bad buildup. I can only imagine three weeks. Yeah, you know I mean, but then again, why did it matter? Like, she was already boning other dudes. What did she need my mouth for? You know what I'm saying? What? 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 The other niggas wasn't good at shit? Huh? Guess you should have picked better, bitch. But the funny part about all of this is that while she's standing up, she still didn't put her clothes on in hopes that at some point I would relent and finish her off. So she's standing there in the bathroom ass naked. Bad as shit. Yet, and yelling and screaming at me, trying to argue me down in hopes to convince me to finish her off. <laughs> I never did that shit. And she's sitting there trying to be firm and yell at me about how I need to finish her off. And I'm not gonna lie to y'all, like 75% of my attention was just staring directly at her vagina. It's just a great looking vagina, man. She had a very, very athletic vagina, probably cause she used the motherfucker so much and never on me. I did that to her like three more times. <laughs> it's cool though, cause she kept trying to get back with me for like a full three years, bro. For two and a half to three years after she dumped me, she kept trying to get back with me and shit. But I would never do shit with her anymore. For two and a half years, didn't do nothing with her. And she would try to offer me sex. And I'd been with this chick for like an entire year and a half of sexless torture. So I was just like, no, absolutely not. When I got my own apartment, she's like, yo, let's go back to your house. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm good. Because in my brain, why would I waste an erection on a chick that I'm like 98% sure is just gonna tease me or bullshit me or something. There's no point. And so I didn't even kick it with her no more. Like it was funny as hell. We ended up getting back together like two and a half or three years later or something like that. I gave her another chance and she made it up to me, man. She really, 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 really made it up to me. I'm not even gonna lie, I can't even front. This is only Farron was a wild ride, bro. But at the end of the day, she was a great freaking chick, you know what I mean? She was a great girl. She was a really, really giving person. And I feel like all of her beliefs and women don't have to bring anything to the table because they are the table. All of that type of feminazi, feminism bullshit. She was heavy in the feminism, but loved getting her vagina eaten. Funny how that shit works. <laughs> So, <laughs> I close this story by saying, you know, she was a great person. I had a great time with her. I would never trust her in a million years because, you know, she's a liar and a cheater and had convinced me to be faithful to her. And I'm over here being crazy faithful for a year and a half. And everyone else was the one having all the fun with her. Not bitter in the least about the situation because I learned a lot. And again, like I said, she made it up to me 
a million times over like three years later when we really really started hanging out but that is a story for another day given how dating is nowadays i kind of hope i don't run into that girl hope you guys enjoyed the bsg story time this is your boy blast miss hd make sure to comment like and or subscribe to his